talking about a, a, a act, civic action, in a sense. So, uh, yeah, I'll start. My name is Bashir, you know that already. I am originally from Haiti, but I was born in New York City. Uh, even though I was born here, I was actually raised in Haiti until the age of 14, 13. And I moved back to the States. Uh, I'm actually, I grew up Catholic, uh, like some of you probably are, because um, Philippines is what we call it Spain, uh, for four months, I believe. And, uh, uh, yeah, so I shared that faith tradition with you in terms of, like, experience and having, you know, baptism, first communion, confirmation, and so forth. But now, throughout my years, I'm about 29 years old, I kind of call myself Christian only, I don't really call myself Catholic. Uh, I question certain things, it's just me, that's who I am. Um, as you grow older, maybe you'll do the same, maybe you'll become more religious, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Christian, or Jewish, or Hindu, Buddhist. Um, but one thing that I've learned so far is, you know, we may have different perspectives, before I get to my story, about um, uh, who God is, and how we reach God, how we get to heaven, how we seek His um, pleasing, uh, but ultimately, in doing so, seeking God's, seeking to please Him and please each other, you know, uh, that's where we have that in common. So we may have a difference of opinion about how we get to doing that, but we ultimately still do it, and that's the main thing that keeps us together, and that's how, and that's how you have to see, ultimately, in your interactions with each other, in your communities, your province, and your country, even internationally, where people you interact. Now, uh, moving to Florida, Miami, and I'm aware that we have a very short time. Uh, you know, I never had any Muslim friends. I went to a church. I stopped going to a Catholic church, and I went to a Christian, non-denominational Protestant church for a while. And you know, my fellow church congregationist will tell me, but you know, why are you hanging out with Muslims? I know a Muslim from Senegal, his name is Omar Diallo. I know another Muslim, Muhammad Malik, was Kashmir, Pakistani. Uh, I know another Muslim who was like me. Uh, he was half Haitian, uh, a little island country, but also he's half Syrian. And you know about Syria, and uh, they have a big uh, civil war. Pretty much what's going on. And um, yeah. So I was told that, you know, hey, but sure, you know, why hang out with Muslims? I was well after 9-11, and also they're telling me, oh, these Muslims going to take you to hell. You know, you're going to convert to da 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 right? And I'm sure it's the same thing with some Muslims who are very conservative. There's nothing wrong with being religious and seeking God, but, like, we're very adamant, oh, you should be hanging out with Christians, right? So I've seen it all from both sides. Um, and thankfully, thank God, um, I've been given and provided a heart that, 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 that denounces naturally uh, basically, uh, the being hateful and being um, being exclusive to my own community and not knowing about others. No, actually, I want to learn about others. I want to learn what they're, about their experiences, and I want to learn, you know, about the fact that you know they're sharing common values. There are certain things historically that we share. Um, so then, you know, with that in mind, you know, going to church. A lot of my church folks would tell me, "But you're this, this." But ultimately, when I was going through trials and tribulations. People who call themselves Christians, you know, weren't there for me. Guess what? It was my Muslim friends who were there for me. So before we even talk about civic engagement, even at your personal level, your life is a testimony and a witness. You know, you know, if you're Muslim and you have friends that are Christian and Jewish, you act in a decent way. You, like, you act with values that are respectful, that, are, that is ethical. That is, then you know, people see that and they appreciate to become your friend. You know, and from Christian, the same way. You know, if you have friends that are Muslim or other religions and the personal interactions, you keep your word, you don't lie, you don't, you, you don't do all these things, you treat others kindly, you help out when you have to, you know, those are things that show a lot about you even at the basic human level. That goes beyond intellectualism, that goes beyond just like, hey, I want to help you out, I want to help you, help you do after school programs. Because ultimately you're learning how to respect each other and work and accept each other as you are, even with your differences. Um, so, um, yeah. So uh, I graduated college, and you know I was in Boston, and in Boston, Boston, Massachusetts is pretty much like the mecca, the Athens of the United States um, in terms of um, Athens of education. That is, you know, if you go to Boston in Northeast America, uh, a vast proportion of colleges are in that small little city and the surrounding area, that small little state. You'd be amazed. Every little corner is a college or university. So while I was there, and we're going to get into civic engagement. And this is where me, I'm becoming engaged civically as a citizen um, on behalf and seeking to promote social justice and human rights at the basic level, at the community level. Um, you know, I'm going to colleges and I'm going to a lot of events. And then, you know, and these events are talking about Muslims in the world, Muslims are this way, Muslims are that way, da 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 da. And then I'm asking myself, you know, yes, you know, this is very intellectual, this is very educating, um, you know, educational. Uh, 
<coughs> but yet in this audience, in this, in this, in these audiences that I'm taking part of, uh, there isn't how would I put it, part Muslims in the audience promoting and actually contributing to the conversation. You have speakers who are connoisseurs, and they have a lot of knowledge about people from the Muslim world about Islamic religion. Um, you have, you know, all the you even have non-Muslims are the same way, and Muslims are. Um, the same way. And all these non-Muslims who are part of the audience and students who are interested in the Muslim world, but then the Muslim students on campus are part of the conversation. So then I'm asking myself, you know, uh, how come the Muslim kids are not engaged? Civic action, civic engagement. So that starts at the basic level on a college campus and your educational institution, you know? How come the Muslim American kids, whether they're from America or from other countries and migrate here to get an education, are not contributing to the conversation? And why is that a problem for me and for you possibly if you're in that situation? Well, you know, do people really know you when outsiders who probably stayed in your country for two years, just reading books all the time, barely having interactions with people, you know, of students who are hearing from them, you know, do they really know about a culture and a people and the diversity within that culture? You know, if they're not represented in the conversation, those people themselves, you know? We're talking about taking action against, let's say, um, Muslims in Pakistan, you know? And then do we know what the people here feel about that? How it affects their family, you know? How they get hurt, you know? How they feel about it? And like, what other perspective, what other human perspective that we're seeing? Because everything we're seeing is in a geopolitical level. Oh, this is America's interest, this is for oil, we're gonna make sure we have national security. But perhaps if you heard from people who are from that region, who are represented here in the United States with the communities here in the diaspora, perhaps, you know, you probably have, you know, a more accurate understanding of the culture and how that, how American policy influences, you know, um, how do you say, you know, uh, those places. And, you know, perhaps if we had those, those perspectives from the Muslim community itself, then we'd actually act in a more appropriate way, you know, more calming way, more peaceful way. Do we have to go to war? Can we have dialogue? If we have more understanding? So all these, this lack of knowledge really, like, um, was disconcerting and confusing to me. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, moving forward, the one last example in terms of civic engagement. So as a person, I'm confused. I'm like, hey, Muslims can represent themselves. They need to talk about their experiences here in America. They're going through a lot of trials and tribulations. A lot of, a lot of things people are talking about doesn't make any sense. I'm, keeping a, I'm not going into the details, unfortunately, because of time purposes. And um, so one experience, just to show you, I'm, in, I'm at this university called the University of Massachusetts, Boston. And, um, and a friend of mine from a local community college, a junior college, it's only a two-year college, and if you go from the two-year to the four-year, you basically do a transfer, and he's Somali. And um, he said, Bashir, you know, we're actually doing an event on campus, we're actually working with the office of the chancellor, and that's a big deal, because you're going from a small community college into Boston, Boston has all these big universities, and then, you know, and community college is like, hey, you're nobody, literally, right? Like, you know, so, um, but he managed to get access to the chancellor, which is the president of this university that I'm working for. And uh, we had met before, I forgot how we met. And um, he said, Richard, can you forward this to the other Muslims on campus? Naturally, I've always, like, you know, since my second year, third year in college, and to this day, I've had a lot of Muslim friends. So uh, I was like, yeah, definitely. I know a lot of kids on campus who are with the Muslim group on campus. They're all socializing. Those are probably more than 50 kids. And my office was right next to the location. And so very passionate that, you know, they had Juma every Friday. They pray, they socialize, they talk about this and that, all the personal things I know all about, and they're human beings. Trust me. It's like a young lady here, she was like, yeah, I don't wear hijab. I was like, come on, man, I know what's up. <laughs> you know who you are. I'm not pointing you out, though. So, uh, yeah. Como se dice? Como se dice? See, I'm from Miami, and then, you know, you know Cuba, Spanish, a little bit. So, um, yeah. So, I'm, like, I'm going to promote the Somali thing. You know, it's a fundraiser, and, you know, they're going to, you know, Somalis are Muslims. So, I, I spread the word about the event to the Muslim kids, about 50 kids. For two weeks before, before the event, I approached them. I was like, hey, hey guys, you know, we got to make this happen. We got to donate some money. It's not even my community. Why do I care? But I see it as a thing that, you know, people are suffering. They have a civil war. You know, it's natural for me to help out because, you know, I'd love to see that thing stop. This is the Somali. Like, Somali used to be considered like the Lebanon of East Africa back in the day. Somali with the beautiful beaches and the Italian culture, most of the Islamic tradition. Um, so, um, yeah. And then, lo and behold, I get to the event, a lot of food, a bunch of American folks, other people from other communities. Only one kid shows up from the Muslim community. From the, uh, and then, you know, he's like, yo, man, I was going to check out the food. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, okay. 
So this is it. You have 50 Muslim kids on campus, and then, you know, most people that show up say Muslim. So I'm not, I'm not accusing anyone of Muslims of being bad or not, I'm just saying. But that's why when I heard about Project Noor, I was excited. I was like, because my mind was like, we need to have a forum, Muslims need to have a forum in, uh, in America. It's actually kind of like where we encourage the students and the youth to get engaged, just like you are. Because you're engaged, because you're interested in social justice and human rights, because you want to make a change in your community, you're not being passive. Because in many ways, Muslims here, you students who are Muslims, you know, you're being, you know, you're in a state where, you know, you have to prove yourself to your country because you, you, people are fearful of you, you know, like, you know, do, do I trust you? Muslims have the same experience, but they're very docile, you know? I'm not saying all of them are, but a lot of people are very you know, calm and they don't want to be too aggressive and communicate too much their experiences and their form. And they, you know, they know how to approach it. So you, know, you guys are already doing that, it's amazing. You want to promote peace. There's nothing wrong with that. You could be aggressive about peace, you know? Um, so, you know, proactive, that's a better word. Um, so yeah, so Project New was basically creating that space where Muslim kids could actually be proactive, they could be encouraged to advocate for issues that allow them to have equality, respect for their culture, their religion, you know, respect for their traditions and so forth, and understanding the diversity with the within the community itself, you know. Um, so I was like, hey, I know Muslim friends of mine who don't believe in certain things or practice differently, or from different sects of Islam, you know, uh, wow, and they, they, they're very engaged in a civic way, they're protest, they advocate for other communities, they want to make change, they want to promote peace, you know, they want to create dialogue between faiths, traditions, and I was like, wow, Project Noah is a perfect space for me to actually, and, and it, 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 sorry about that, <clears throat> so I'm going a little fast. <laughs> All right, there you go, the South China Sea, we need to stop these Chinese people from messing around with the South China Sea. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, right? I'm messing with you. I'm just cracking jokes. You know what's going on with South China Sea, right? So yeah. Fishing and trying to, hey, I'll get on my ocean. Mm -hmm. ah. Anyways, so getting back to the point, I just wanted to complete it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I heard about it and I was like, hey, let me become engaged in a civic way. I didn't really think about it intellectually, but like to me, it was like something I was passionate about already and that's something I was concerned with. It always did. So I decided to help out with Project Noah, and that's how I got involved. So um, let me get into the topic of civic engagement. <laughs> so that's how I got involved with Project Noah, because I was civically engaged throughout my, not necessarily overtly, but. So this is slide one, since we don't have the projector here. So this is, this is what, if you look at your piece of paper,